Right, welcome, guys, to a brand new episode of the Poker Player Podcast. I'm your host, Andreas Furley, and today I'm joined by none other than Giraf Ganger 7 who has been an MTD crusher for the last few years, um, but also a critical voice in poker on his Twitter account whenever there's been something going on in poker. He's been um, organizing or helping to organize a poker boycott last year um, when Poker Stars again made some rake changes or some changes in their rake back. And yeah, welcome to the podcast. Um, how are you doing today? I'm great. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, it's been a while since I've uh, done anything like a real interview. I I've only been like shit posting on Twitter and that's it. So. And now you have another platform and now you have your face yeah. and you can directly address people like that. Um, yes. Could you give us a little bit, just a rundown on how your poker career got to how did you get to where you are today in, in uh, No Limit Hold'em entities or entities in general? You just play No Limit, right? Is that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I haven't actually tried, like, I don't know. I read um, Dylan Lindy's book on like mixed games because I last year I wanted to try and get some W Coop uh, things, like wins for all the mixed games and stuff. But um, it's just, it's not my thing, man. Like PLO, it's, it's too. It's like it's like crack. I can't do. It's too much. It's too much for me. I can't do it. So I, I just stick to uh, hold them and specifically tournaments. Like even even cash, it's not really my thing. I tried a little bit of cash, like playing Zoom. Uh, I think 100 and now I played a reasonable amount of hands, but it's it's not for me. Like even though I think I was winning a little bit, I wasn't. I didn't feel like I was going uh, forward fast enough. So with MTTs, you can. I mean, if you go, if you start low, you can still, even if you don't have a big score, you can still feel that you're getting better. Like your win rates are getting better. You understand more and more spots. You see, like on final tables, people making big mistakes that you know are big mistakes, etc. So you can always get better fast to a certain point. Uh, and you, you're someone that got uh, better very quickly, right? Because you are fairly, like you're not one of the guys who had, you know, between 2005 and 2013 had the easy years of MTTs, but your prime years were the last few years. So that's not, um, you know, not that typical, right? There's not that many people that came up just in the last few years. So how, how did you get so good that quickly? Um, I don't know. I think uh, I just started late, and uh, like the games were, it, it's just different, right? Like there's always there's there's two things. So uh, when I started, there was already a lot more uh, content available to just get better by yourself. Before that, there wasn't really anything. Mm -hmm. Like that's why, like, like okay, the games were easier, but it was also like harder to get better because there wasn't that much content out. There were no solvers, etc. Like now, it's if you want to put in the time, it's kind of easy to see the path to get better. Like, you know, okay, I can learn the basics, uh, like could do start with Bensi B or, or something like that, use the charts, get better, do like some pile work. Like it's easy to see how you can get better. And I think when I started, it was, uh, there was a lot of content out, but I joined a stable um, and they had like really good coaches like Ape Styles. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Rob Tinian and uh, you know, like a lot of a lot of uh, players who were really good at at that time. I mean, Ape Styles has, has been good uh, every single time. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so for me, I just uh, instantly saw um, the way to go forward. Like I saw, like okay, I have to do this. 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 And I just did it. And I just grinded, grinded, grinded. And uh, I got like to like right under the top in. Uh, online like high stakes games i would say i was right under the top uh and then i won like i had like a super lucky couple of months where i got like final table in the in the milli like a special milli and then i won that big uh, well i got second in that in a big uh big 1k uh, multi-day thing so uh that was like just a big score right like but even if you take that out I'm up like a lot of money, right. but it's just, you know, like the regular grind, right? That was the one that Jeff Gross was streaming, right? Is that correct? Yeah, because yeah, I yeah. Think he was at the final table, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that one, yeah. Um, how did yeah. poker feel for you when you were coming up and how does it feel today? Um, can you describe a little bit about how, you know, 
playing poker feels like when you know when when you're grinding for up to you said 14 hours and then on a very very consistent schedule you said like to me before that you were playing poker for two years straight and just locking entities every day so every day. how did that poker development go with like how it felt like to play um it's it's just like you're in the zone uh, for a long time which is it, it breaks you down uh mentally without you really knowing it i would say but not not not, not necessarily in like a, a bad thing like it changes your mind right so it's like uh, i think it's it's maybe um, comparable to uh, like sports sports maybe where you just put in all the work 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 and just with a singular goal like you just okay on, on that date i have to you know uh, win like this uh, olympic medal or something so you you aim everything towards that and i think for me it was kind of the same thing but without like a super clear goal but with like i always wanted to be the best you know at online mpts so i had that goal in mind and to get there i knew i, I would have to move up in stakes and just keep winning and keep getting better so i had like this goal and everything else was just bullshit i guess yeah you just in your mind like everything becomes irrelevant besides that you know speaking about like that mental effect that poker or like gaming channel has i know that you follow dr dr k a little bit or at least you have retweeted like something that he has done about mental yeah, health i saw his uh yeah because like when the yeah the suicide thing uh, happened yeah I, I i i think i saw like maybe one one other thing he did before that but yeah i thought it was pretty good I think that one of the things that that maybe you can relate or talk about a little bit is um, how our brain chemistry changes when we play poker for extensive hours, how our problem solving abilities changes, because I think that it's a it's a unique way of solving problems. If you're playing a poker tournament, right, you have parameters and within those parameters, you try to find a solution. Whereas that's not the, pr the problem solving approach that you would have for other problems in life. Is it? Um, you... I think, I mean, this is like already kind of deep. Yeah, uh, uh, let's, let, let's give it a try. I mean, if philosophical level. Yeah, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go. So <laughs> it's it's uh, a lot of a lot of players, when they, they talk about like problem solving and uh, logic, uh, they all look at it as a good thing, right? Like you can use all, all the things you learn in poker, uh, you know, how variance works, how like there's not always a uh, hundred percent outcome with things which in like if you look at the news or how other people see things it's it's very black and white and in poker it's a lot of uh you know odds right like you know okay if i do this the outcome is 30 percent it's going to be bad and 70 percent is good or is it worth it etc so it's it, it's good if you look at it um like from a financial uh point of view or something but people forget sometimes like real life is is actually you, you don't really want to be look at things super logically all the time because you get depressed you know because it's really bad like at the end we're all gonna die you know that's like you don't really want to look at that kind of stuff all the time right because otherwise you know it's eh, it's not great so that's well, you have I mean, to yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty yeah, depressing, yeah. right? Like everybody end, you love will die. Oh. Yeah, but at <laughs> the know? end, I, I think yeah. that. Uh, I mean, it, it's a really interesting topic. I think uh, you know, thinking about death and and also loved ones that end up dying at some point, right? Um, because yeah, if you like, there's some urgency, right? That you're you're not going to live forever, and that might also push you to do certain mm -hmm. things yeah. today that you otherwise would just wouldn't feel a necessity. And I think in poker specifically, one of the obstacles that I found at, at least at some points, I don't know if it's the same for you, is that if you make a certain amount of money winning a poker, um, it would certainly demotivate me slightly um, just because I see that the next, you know, there's a, yeah, this is the standing amount of uh, utility that you get from winning more, right? Does that, does, that has that impacted you in the last years when after that big win and um, recently, you've taken a break as well. Is that part of the reason why you think that could have happened, or that uh, you yeah. have to grind? Yeah, I mean, there's other things like real life stuff, but in general, yes, I would say because 
it's also one of those things where if you're in in the game like you're grinding you're grinding and you look at you look on the shark scope and you see people who play like from 2008 and they're up like you know 300 400 k and then they're but the last year or two years they're like break even or or losing and you look at look look at these guys and I'm like oh why are you still playing uh you know i mean don't you realize that you know you're not winning or why don't you get better again you know because you used to be able to bid and for me i was like i was the same like i was looking at these guys and saying like come on guys like you're you're stupid you know why, why would you either keep playing or why would you not get better why don't you realize that you're not beating the game anymore and i think like i'm actually in that spot or i was at least i mean i'm still i still am like not really crushing the games right now but like it, it, you just slip into complacency i would say like you you beat the game at a certain point and you have some success and then i don't i don't think it's like cockiness or like you deserve this or anything like that i mean for some players it maybe is like that but uh it's just like the drive does go down and down and down and down i would say if you're like if you reach a certain amount of goals that you wanted to reach like it's very hard to just keep going and staying at the top. It's I think it's it's almost harder to stay at the top than to get there. It's it's almost like cliche, but it is true. I, I think it is really uh, like mm -hmm. a real thing. So. It's very interesting because, uh, for example, um, I don't know if you've heard that statement by Linus, but Linus says the opposite. He says like it's easy to stay at the top, but he's Linus. You know, it's like a little bit well, of different. Yeah, but but I mean, apparently, yeah, yeah. I think I think for for him it's it's a little bit different because he basically solved poker right like he actually saw like there is nowhere to go for him like he he basically solved poker the poker is not going to change any mm -hmm. like on a significant level where he's already at because he's already he basically solved poker right like if you look at him he plays like what like 100 tournaments a year and he's he just keeps winning and he, mm -hmm. he doesn't play anything else like maybe some private games or whatever you know i don't know but like he he solved poker it's different for me. Like I, I, I never solve poker. I just beat the guy who, who's at my table. Like I'm better than this guy. I'm better than this guy. I'm better than this guy. And oh, this guy is maybe better than me. So I'll try and get better than him again. And that's how kind of like it works. And now what, you know, now it's like very solver based, but even that is like, it's not, most people don't, haven't really solved like the whole game. Yeah. I think Linus is probably, you know, he probably solved the game, so <laughs> he doesn't really have to do anything anymore. Yeah, but, but so so for him, it could be even more. Yeah, yeah, okay. Like he, that's why he probably sees himself as like staying at the top, I guess, um, because he he is that far. And uh, at the same time, as you said, it's probably not not nowhere to go when you're reaching that level, or not that much to still do. And obviously, there's not many players um, competing at, at that um, kind of uh, you know precision of the game. Um, but but in the end. And wouldn't you say that uh, also, like now you've taken a break, like how did it change the way you you are now, like when you're playing a tournament, um, what is going on through your head when you're playing the tournament? And, and when you see it, the, what do you expect to get out of that experience of playing a tournament? Yeah, I think that's a great question because it's only been recently that I, I've been aware of, like I look at poker differently than I did before. Um, it's just, I don't know like the the true passion for the game itself is a little bit gone you know because i mean online poker isn't as i mean it, it's probably not never going to really truly die but it isn't going in a like a positive direction right so you just see like i mean the future might not be too bright so like it, it's it's more trying to get some money out of it as fast as you can and maybe like gambling a little bit more so i mean truly like the love for the game is a little bit less. I still enjoy winning a, a poker tournament. Like it's still like, I think it, it's probably even more of a great feeling now than it used to be. Because I mean, w when you play like all day, every day, you, you have to win like a tournament every other day almost, you know? So you kind of get used to the feeling, which is kind of sad. Like winning a tournament is so like hard to do just like statistically it's really hard to do so you should at least feel like really good if you win one right and yeah. i think like I, I i still do i still do i think now it's more i didn't really care about losing 
And I think now I care more about losing than I did before. So like the winning is the same, but the losing hurts more, I would say for me personally. And that's just a new thing and it hasn't been like that before? Uh, no, I, I never cared about losing because I always had like, I always had like this thing where I knew I was better than everybody. I was very sure. Even when I wasn't, I was very, I was maybe overconfident. That yeah. was like, yeah, I don't care. Like, I, because I knew I was going to play like a thousand tournaments this month. So if I lost a flip on the final two tables, I don't, I didn't, didn't really care because the day, like tomorrow, I'm just going to be in the same position again and again and again and again. And now it's more like, I'm playing like 10 tournaments a, a day and I skip a lot of days. So I'm not like grinding as hard. So if you go deep now and you lose that flip, it hurts more because you know, like I'm not going to get into this position every day, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe it's subconscious or I don't know. It's, it's, but it's, very I, I think it's true. That's very interesting because for me, it's actually different. Um, <laughs> viewers of my stream and uh, can definitely vouch for that and then say, I used to have a much, much bigger problem years ago when I when I lost, like the losses hurt like so much. Um, it, it's yeah. uh, that, that I would really sometimes almost rage quit streams or like be, be really on tilt. Um, whereas today, I'm still not happy losing, like I just don't like losing. Um, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I. I have laughed about pretty big losses recently, and I don't know why that happens. Like that, I don't know. It could be like a desensitize, desensitization or some oh, yeah. English language. But yeah, that, that at some point you just don't don't care anymore, and you yeah. just keep playing, and you know that you're gonna win if you make good decisions. Um, I just don't know whether that's always a good thing or a bad thing, because then, yeah, it's, it's always a question where um, what I told myself, well, maybe it's. I've trained now to not hear those emotions as much, but then it could have impacts as well that I don't hear emotions otherwise as much anymore. Um, so yeah, that that's that's a bit tricky for sure. Um, yeah, I think I think it's the same the same uh, like almost topic that we touched like a little bit before is like the desensitization to money. And one like in one view, it's good. It's good, right? Because money is kind of you know. It's I, I, like it's it's stupid, right? Money is like it's not really worth anything. But you also get like desensitized to emotions, and I think that's really bad when you look at it from like a real life life perspective. Is like you don't really want to like not have emotions or not like have uh, emotional reactions to things that happen to you because it, it it is like a big part of life is emotions. You know, like mm. like if you think about. Uh, I don't know, like movies or music, like it, those things are stay with you. You know, like if you uh, if you go to a concert of your favorite band and like the sun is f coming in from a certain angle and it's, it's beautiful, it's something that you will always remember for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Like you, you will, you you have to like be open to those kind of things still. And I think uh, when you play like for money especially i think i think that's like the unique uh, thing about poker compared to other games like even though other games also like desensitize you to a certain extent if you just keep playing and playing and playing like the money aspect really i think fucks with your head like in the in the in a unique sense where you become truly desensitized to sometimes like really bad stuff and sometimes to really good stuff like you become like ah whatever you know tomorrow is a different day or and it's not a good thing like you have to try and deal with with stuff you know you can't just ignore it like i think i think that's one of those things that your brain like starts you know uh with poker like ignoring like the the far ends of the spectrum of emotion and everything becomes kind of like in the middle and mm -hmm. your brain i think starts looking at things the same way almost like mm -hmm. one thing is bad and one thing is good but your brain is like you know it doesn't really yeah. matter and at, at the same time i think it's more or less a state of mind and and it's because you've trained your brain to do a certain thing playing poker and not worrying about the swings and the money involvement the desensitization and and then at the same time you i think you, you know because the the brain is pretty plastic and you, you can you can change it within you know months or a year pretty quickly mm -hmm. again that, uh, you know, long term, I think, for example, when you stop playing poker, you will have a, an experience where that that shifts again. Like, 
has the period of mm, I would say six weeks for you been long enough where you have seen changes in those last six weeks? Because I think it's very interesting that you're now coming on the podcast and you have that break because that's mm -hmm. uh, I haven't taken that break yet. Yeah, like I've, yeah. I've slowed down a little bit with poker for some time because I've played lots this year, um, but I haven't taken that break. So I, I, I would be very curious about how, for example, your real life, like how, how has it changed how you interact with, with others or with problems specifically? Um, I mean, I've been really, uh, I, I had some uh, really serious, well, serious, like, oh, uh, shit, my internet's gone again, I think. Look. I still hear you. You're still okay, yeah. Sorry, it was yeah. I could drop a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I had like some bad stuff happen to me, uh, or you know, to me and my family, uh, I guess. And uh, I mean, I didn't really deal with it well. Like I, I've, I had like uh, a long time. I had like panic, panic, panic attacks. Um, like when I was playing, when I wasn't playing, like it wasn't really in, like directly related to playing poker. But now that I like took a long break, uh, and it's it's a lot better now. I I don't know. Like I don't really. I feel like I maybe I should go to like a therapist or something. But at the same time, like you know, I I, I don't think it's gonna get worse, right? Like so, I'm kind of just dealing with it myself, and I think. Uh, I'm doing okay, but I think like the long break now uh, is very good for me to uh, to just get back into like real stuff, you know, because it's not only the poker, it's also like just online stuff. Like I think for you as well, like you create content, you, you're always like online and you sometimes, I mean, for me, I don't really care about like real people too much. You know, like I don't, I don't like go out anymore and talk to people. Like mm -hmm. I kind of been there, done that kind of thing, but I do care about you know some people, and I think it's important that you actually care about them, not like in a in a. So you just say it, right? I mean, you can yeah, just... yeah. Like oh yeah, you, oh yeah. I care about my 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 parents, or I care about my uh, my girlfriend. Like it's easy to say that, but like to actually do like take actions and stuff it's sometimes people forget that i think uh for me it's like i kind of want to move on to something else um i don't know what i don't know like you you brought up some uh some of my old tweets where i tried to be like a little bit creative with the jokes and you know like stuff like that so maybe i'll, I'll try and do that um but yeah, like it's, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's, it's really hard for me to, to explain it. Uh, I think like for everybody, it's important to realize that everybody has something like everybody has like problems. So it's <laughs> really, you have to be aware of like, you can't just, you know, shit on people. Like I, for me personally, I like to shit on things, but I, I really try and not shit on people because like on the behavior that, for side of things, right? Yeah, like if yeah, somebody just yeah. fucks up, like you can shit on that behavior or that sort yeah. of action. You don't have to make it yeah, that yeah. personal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that that's like, especially now with the online culture and stuff. Like I, I don't really cancel culture, whatever. I don't really care. But like the, everybody takes everything very personally, and everybody like digs in with their opinion, or you know, I'm right, you're wrong, and they, everybody digs in very deep. And I think, I mean, I think it's going to shift, right? I, like, it's always one of those things where it's almost like uh, the human culture is like a hive mind where, where I see it like shifting again to more, uh, like, better. Like, it's going to, there's going to be a counter reaction to like the very, uh, like, black and white uh, opinion thing. I think it's going to shift again, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Well when you talked about the opponents that you saw on Sharkscope, et cetera, that had like break even graphs for the last two years and say, well, would you say that, yeah, that they probably don't know anything else to do with their time? You know, they're just so used to poker by now and they wouldn't like see any other way out or that they just have to continue because there's just no other way of continuing for them. Yeah. that That's like a real issue. I think is, uh, I mean, if you play, let's say you play professional poker for five years and you did well, but like you, you feel like, okay, there's not nowhere, like 
you want to zone out of the poker. I mean, who's going to hire you? <laughs> There's no, like, you can't say, oh, I was a professional poker player for like any normal job. Like you can go into finances or whatever, or if, if you have like a degree in something, maybe mm -hmm. you can get hired. But even then, like you have to explain like this five year gap mm -hmm. and what you're going to say, oh, I gambled online for money for five years. Hire me. Like it doesn't. I, I think it could. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, people I outside. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, so people uh, outside of poker, people mm -hmm. outside of poker don't really understand poker. I think that that's something that you forget when you're in it. It's like people still don't understand like what, what is going on, like even the simple things, right? Like it's just a completely different world. So mm -hmm. it's uh, it, like unless like people are into finance or certain specific things that kind of correlate to poker, I think it's very hard for people to understand uh, poker and like see it as a, a valuable part of like life because it, it is like if you're uh, like a professional player for five years and you do well, it's actually like a good thing. Like you can actually use it in other jobs, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. I think for that part, I think it's an interesting topic in general. I, maybe I should make a video in, about it in the future. Let me know in the comments now, if, if you think that is something that, uh, you know, people care about in poker, but here, here's my take on it. It's when, when you think that, nobody will hire you. I think it's mostly the people that focus so much on the resume, right? If, if you know that your application will highly um, rely on, on your resume and what you have been doing, that you don't have a gap the last five years with playing poker, I think then you have no shot at a job in that case, right? But the, I think uh, when I've done a little bit of research with people interviewing, et cetera, like what is important for interviews, a lot of people also say that they focus on the person as well. And then, of course, there are some requirements that you have to fulfill. And if some of that, the requirements is that you have been working in a similar environment before, then you have no shot. But the, I think as long as you, as a person, have skills required for a position, and I think the job market is shifting so quickly in this new age, I think there is actually a shot in some, some spots yeah. for any poker player that has, has been successful at it and has that sort of... You know, if, if a similar skill than problem solving in poker is required for the new position, I I, I just don't yeah. think that there's any any reasons against somebody who has been successful in poker. But I think that there's disadvantages. I agree with that. But I think there's also we should always, and that's maybe a approach that I have been training the last two years at least, try to falsify like a sort of belief. And if any of you or any of you that you know are out there and who think this way, that they cannot change from poker to anything else if they've been making money with poker, I believe that you should really try to falsify that belief and try to find for find examples out there who are successfully doing it. Because there's certainly some people um, that go back to their jobs or that they, they just find some new door that opens. Uh, obviously, social media is one of them that can, you know, open a door for you if you if you put out content or if you make something creative and and uh, you discover some new industry as well that you could just put your mind to and be i guess just self-employed and there's a lot of opportunities i think today that you if you have the skills and you can work on the skills within months to to create something great um yeah yeah in, I, in agree, I agree and especially like you can always um if you can you can always bet bet on yourself, and I think that's mm -hmm. it's worth doing. Uh, it's like uh, like you you're trying to build something for yourself, right? Not just poker, but like you try to do some creative stuff, or uh, you know you're doing social media, whatever. Like it's it's a good thing to bet on yourself, especially these times where, like you said, like I think uh, like classic education. Uh, is just not as good as uh, people think it was, right? Like going to school for three to five years to, I mean, for a doctor, it's, you know, you have to do it. But like for a lot of jobs, it's a lot of the time is like, you just, once you take the job, you still have to learn how to do the job, even though you studied for it like three or four years, like you still have to get the experience. So sometimes life experience is, 
it's better than those three or four years that you've been studying and for that specific job or even it's better because you have like a more open mind or have more experiences so yeah i i do agree uh and i think it's also changing like you said like more people in like big companies are looking more towards like unique unique people more uh because i mean if you go to school and you also only have this like this paper piece of paper saying yeah he he's capable of doing this or whatever but if you have a, that extra unique thing like being a successful poker player and you you can explain it to people that okay it takes this and this and this to become successful i think it's like you said it's actually a plus like in the job market sometimes yeah yeah what has been a little bit surprising to me is our in general when i talk to poker players just like you that um a lot of players they do what you have done they play lots of lots of lots and then they have a break and then they consider actually moving on and doing something else um whereas the alternative to that narrative or that future that you want to build could be to take high ev spots let's say sunday grind or just some tournament series um and I think that's that's probably like if, if I could take one person in the industry that I think does exactly this, it's probably Sean Deep, right? Because he he just pops up for this tournament series and just grinds them out. And actually, I think that fairly well in the last few years, if I, I think mm -hmm. that yeah. that has been the case. Um, I don't know how how you think about this game, whatever, but he's like, I think one of the people who, who just do this momentum. I, it's probably not as efficient that you're probably going to lose quite some skill um doing that but it could still be profitable and also maybe even satisfying to do as a, as a, as, a, as a, you know playing poker recreationally i guess for or like let's say just very intensively for a month or for a weekend and then during the week just move your attention towards other things so i'm a bit surprised that there's a lot of people who have that sudden break where they um they just stop or they take a long break and then they they just think they they they, they want to flip and, and just do something else whereas they've been really good at poker and could do it for a a, a lower frequency thing right so what are your thoughts on, on that well, the, the, i i kind of agree with it and i understand uh, what you're saying but like for me my experience is uh for to be really successful uh you just have to go all in. Like you have to be kind of like crazy obsessed with whatever you're trying to do. Like if you want to be a high stakes PLO crusher, you just have to be obsessed, obsessed, obsessed about it. And I think from like, for me, it was also like, I was just obsessed with it. Like that was yeah. all that mattered. And it's very hard to just scale back a little bit. You know, it's really, I, I, I think it's also a mental thing. Cause like you said, yeah. it, it should be possible, right? Like if you're like, like for me, if like I was beating the high stakes for a while, if I just, you know, if I didn't want to keep fighting at the high stakes, I could just move down a little bit or like a lot and still make a decent living and just have less stress. I think that's kind of like the goal I'm trying, what I'm trying to do. But it is like, it is tough to, to do something half, like half and half. Uh, like balanced you know like it's it's a it's a the balance is it's 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 hard to do it mentally i think i mm -hmm. think it's a mental block i think it's very possible i, I just that, think it's 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 tough to do it actually yeah. that mental block that you mentioned is probably your definition of success or people's definition of success because if you define success in poker as exactly putting out those numbers that you have right mm -hmm. in the last mm -hmm. few years and if you think that if you don't put out those numbers that's not successful then that is a, a huge barrier for you to continue in any recreational or part-time form because it would mean that you are not successful. And if you tell yourself, like, I'm a successful person when I do this, then it will not allow you to do that because it goes against the picture that you have of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And I think it's, um, yeah, I think that's a very big part of it and i think for me now i've stepped away from that view that i have to be successful at poker to be like to have some value for my like i, I can be something else right like i don't have to be the successful poker player even though i mean 
I am kind that's kind of like what I am like in the in the public sphere is like okay he's that guy who has this monster graph which I do have it's it's a very very impressive graph but like it's I, I'm not like I don't want to be defined by that anymore right so mm -hmm. I'm trying to move on and I'm trying to still play poker because I do like I think the game is very it's one of the most beautiful games ever made or you know what it is like what whether it's Hold'em or PLO or whatever, like just a pure card I game. More, I agree more. Like I'm, yeah. I'm totally with that. Yeah. That's it's, 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 it's amazing. It's an amazing game. Uh, and there's like a lot of bullshit around it right now. Or well, always have been, but now it's like maybe a little bit more. But uh, like the game, the purity of the game is it's 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 great. It's unique. So I keep I want to keep doing it, and I think I want to do it like. I don't want to do it at a recreational level because for me it's it's tough to do, but. I want to do it at, at like a, a less hardcore thing. I want to do something else as well. Like I want to do, I want to be like, instead of like uh, the poker player who has like a couple of cats and yeah, is yeah. vegan or whatever, mm -hmm. I want to be like something else who also plays poker, you know? Something so like you that. A part time thing. I'm not saying like recreation because yeah. sometimes you have that professional recreational yeah. labeling. And I, I, I don't think, recreational necessarily means uh having a weak game right you can still have a strong game as, as a recreational if you just make it like a part-time thing yeah. but yeah speaking about <laughs> someone in chat says my graph is going opposite ways of yours uh, yeah. <laughs> it's batman uh, do you have any tips for the people in chat because i know a couple of people in the chat have been asking uh there's one question uh, could you just quickly address what the pko like just your thoughts on PKO strategy. Um, just maybe some drop some knowledge uh, for people in the chat because I think a lot of you guys are are here for that. Um, yeah. So maybe just. I mean, Wait. regarding PKO, it's uh, I, I like it personally. Um, I think the recreationals like it, like normal people who play once in a while like it. So it it ha it's, it's going to become like the standard. Like it's not going to be fifty fifty anymore. It's going to be the standard to have like a PSKO which I think is actually good um, because it, it removes a, a certain a couple things that are not so good with poker is like the long late reg, like the mm -hmm. max late reg now. It's like five hours sometimes. And if there's a PSKO, you can't really do that profitably anymore, uh, which is a good thing, but is, nobody actually talks about that too much. But uh, one, one of the aspects of a PKO is that it's kind of fun to play, like to have like this, it's just more fun, I would say. Um, the edges are tougher to calculate, so I think that's why like regs still kind of prefer the the normal freeze out stuff because it's more pure poker or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, which I, I don't I don't really care too much about. Uh, I think the edges are smaller, though, uh, because uh, I mean there's more. Um, I mean there's more money out of the prize pool before you're actually in the money, so. I think the edges are a little bit smaller overall, which is that's why like it's good that on party poker there's half rake uh, because I mean the smaller the edges, the more the rake actually hurts, you know. So uh, I think that's kind of I mean it would be great if the rake was less on PSKOs because I think it should be, but uh, it, it is a fun game and uh, the strategy is different, right? Like especially. Uh, the deeper you go, the bigger the bounties compared to like pay jumps, compared to like the chance of getting first and getting all the bounties. Like it, it's a, it's not that easy. I know there's like different views on it as well. Still, I mean, which is kind of crazy, right? Because it's I mean it's 2020. There's solvers all around, and there's still like different kind of views on how to treat uh, knockouts. So I yeah. think that's a good thing. You know, everything that like make solving poker harder is a good thing right yeah so some some different things for example right now a lot of sites are incorporating like some splashes you know that uh, just in cash game formats for example where solving the game with variables like splashes will be harder if, if money flies on the table every five hands and that's a big part of how you can win at the game winning that piece of the pot then um i think that, that i agree with that that's that's a good mechanic for the game to stay attractive um so that it's not like solved especially by bots because bots are going to be a huge threat to online poker um they are they they have been and they they will be always threats and 
sites have to compete that you might you just mentioned that there's a lot of uh shit going on around poker what is the thing that bothers you the most in poker in the last year uh i think we talked a little bit about it and we kind of disagreed a, a little bit like i think uh a lot of the um, the scamming or like the the finding the edges on the on the like on the edge of uh what's like against the law or you know morally okay or not mm. a lot of these like things cross the edge of like pure stealing and because it's poker everybody's like it's not a big deal it's it's just another edge it's just like the angle it's it's angle whatever and i think uh i mean if you if you try and use bots if you try and use uh like playing on two accounts or if you try and car chair or like all these things, they're like the same as stealing in my opinion. Yeah, it's that, pure that, stealing. that yeah. I, I completely agree with. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it, like, but there's always levels to yeah, yeah. what you do up. unethically. And I think that it's way too easy to not measure it the same way. And I think that where we disagree before um, where, where we talked is that um, when, for example, the whole Changelman incident where, um, you know, he was outed to have played Bill, ben Ker Bill Perkins, I think that the level of what he has done there is similar to pushing your agenda too hard on people to give you your money or to play on your app site or whatever. I think it's a similar level and it's way too easy to judge one and not judge the other. Yeah. That's, I think, the disagreement. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I think we actually agree, but it's like, yeah, yeah. Like for me, I think I have to. Somebody has to say something, like because the thing with Jungle Man was like everybody was like, ah, Bill Perkins, you know, how 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 didn't you know you were getting, like it's a private game. Everybody knows you're getting cheated. That's not how it works. He's the mark. He's the guy who gets cheated. So people aren't gonna tell him, hey, you're getting cheated, like. He's the fish in the game. Like everybody's trying to take his money. So if if somebody gets outed trying to take his money in a like less legit way, like Jungle Man did, even if he didn't su su succeed in taking his money, like we have to like shit on him. Like it's our duty to just shit on him. Like we have to say you're a thief, even if it's like like you say it's like offering these games or trying to scam people in other ways. Also doesn't get talked about. Like there's a lot of problems in poker, especially like in the more uh, private kind of thing or behind the scenes stuff, affiliate business that doesn't get talked about. But if somebody gets outed from for stealing money, we have to shit on him. We have to like say this is not okay. We have to do something. Like somebody has to do something. And the problem is also like you said before is like Jungle Man just has to say oh I'm sorry or whatever. Like it wasn't even an apology. It was like a half apology just shuts up for a month and then just pretends like nothing happened. And everybody's like, yeah, it's fine. And in a year, because the turnover of like people who are in poker, like goes pretty fast. Like people stay in poker if mm -hmm. for like three years, maybe. And then they go away. Like jungle man already scammed people like eight years ago, like a legit scam. And everybody forgot. Like I, I didn't, I, I almost forgot, you know, uh, I was like, oh yeah, the Jira thing. Yeah, that's that was also Jungle Man. Yeah, I forgot. And like now it's the same thing, and it's gonna happen again and again and again and again. And nobody's gonna do anything because there is no, there's no police, and everybody's like involved with everybody else. And I mean, somebody has to do something, you know. And it's not gonna happen. And that's yeah. that's that's the thing that really upsets me. Is Here, here's the thing. Yeah, here's the thing, though. In my view, the only way that that's gonna change. Um, is the regulation and regulation is a huge threat to poker in itself as well, right? So that's that's the dark side of it. Like there's, unfortunately, in my view, uh, oftentimes, except for the community actually getting to background and like agreeing to like some moral compass or something, um, mm -hmm. there's not much that we can do because if we push it too hard or like, you know, you, you make videos, for example, I could make videos holding some stuff that's good, that's wrong in poker and maybe I'm going to do that in the future. But there's there's some backlash that can come from that. And one of that is that, yeah, there's going to be over-regulation. Over-regulation is so dangerous to poker. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because yeah. The governments, they have no idea what poker is in, in general. So what are the, like, it's, it's literally... You can you can throw darts uh, blindfolded, and and it's the same thing what the government's going to do with poker. They have no idea whatsoever, and 
they they might just shut it down in more countries that it's already shut down and they don't even understand the consequences i'm baffled by how poorly governments make decisions in that in that sense because the consequences are just that the black markets are going to grow that the scamming is going like we've seen the development there's more scams than ever before in poker there's more um black money moved around back you know back yeah it's just insane how the development has gone and I have actually interacted with the Swiss government when they banned online poker a little bit. I mean, it's just some parts of it. And mm -hmm. I just told them, look, the black market's going to grow. Like, it's totally obvious. And obviously, whenever there's money involved in the end, the only thing that matters is that the bottom line of the individual gains. I think that people are just extremely selfish in that regards. Like, everyone has, like, a position in, 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 mm -hmm. in any institute or government or whatever. Mm -hmm. and it's just the bottom line that matters. Nothing mm -hmm. else. Yeah, but yeah, but my point is more like, like you said, like as a community, we have to do something. Like the thing with Mike Postle is, okay, he didn't get like convicted or whatever. He's gonna get away with it legally, but he's mm -hmm. gonna get like he's not gonna be able to walk into WSOP and everybody's just gonna throw shit at him, right? Yeah. And I think that that's the good thing, right? Because he is a cheater. He is a scammer. He should mm -hmm. be like ostracized. And the thing with Jungle Man is, he's gonna be on the next uh, whatever Triton uh, money launderer scheme. He's going to be there trying to take uh, money from like Bill Perkins again, but in a different kind of way. So it's like, and everybody just moves on. And I'm like, I'm not okay with it. Like, that's, that's my thing is like, I, I mean, I don't know what we have to do, but we have to shit on people. Like we have to do, like if people steal, we have to say, you're a thief. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to just sit here and listen to your stupid joke and laugh. You know, you're a thief. Like, I'm not going to take you, I'm not going to look at, uh, what what other things you do unless you like do right because that's a, the other thing like in his apology he says like oh i'll i'll look inside or whatever and i'll do what i think is right that's not how it works man like we like somebody else has to tell you what to do and i think bill is like pretty forgiving so i think he was like he, he they, they settled it right so that's okay like I'm, i don't have a problem with that but like like he doesn't he doesn't get to just do that get out it like get caught stealing and get away with it like as if nothing happened like we have to do something as a community to combat that like it's the same thing with um people who double account online or whatever it's it's tough to prove right so if somebody gets caught doing it we have to be very strict against it like because the the chance that somebody gets caught like ghosting people or uh, double accounting or it's very small it's really like the chances are still kind of small it's kind of easy to get away with it i mean uh -huh. maybe not a long run but like you know just in a short term it's kind of easy to get away with it. and then if you get caught and there are no, zero consequences what's stopping anybody from just starting to steal from everybody and then like the the consequences are more and more heavy like it just gets worse and worse and worse so we have to do i mean besides like the the inside moral thing there mm -hmm. has to be some kind of like uh like poker culture thing where there is like you you can get try and get every edge possible within this kind of framing within the rules and uh i think the rules are go almost gone i think at the moment right like there's it's free for all with all the with all the bullshit going on almost and it's it's, a, it's gonna be a problem soon i think the thing that I see is if you want to change people you ha or the way the industry works, I think you have to change the incentives and the incentives. The strongest incentive in poker is money. Undoubtedly, it's not you like some people care about their reputation. I know for sure I do. So but a lot of people just don't um, and they, they just if they can see enough upsides in the incentive of money, they will take the risk of losing their reputation short term, mid term, because as we discussed, long term, the reputation rarely suffers, except for if you go past level, if you go my parcel, your reputation will suffer probably for the next 10, 20, 30 years, as long people will remember the kind of bullshit that he did. But, but I mean, you do okay, but that, like, okay, so sorry to interrupt, but like, yeah. the, the only reason why Mike parcel is like such a big thing, it's because of Joey. Mm -hmm. Like like his scam is not I mean it is kind of creative like it's a creative scam like however he did it like we still don't really know exactly how he did it but like 
it's a creative scam involving like a lot of people and it's live on television almost so it is like creative but if you look at like how much money he actually stole it's not that crazy compared to some other scams and uh it's not that much it's just yeah. 150k and yeah i mean i mean i got robbed for uh for 150k you know like fuck like it's it's like and it's i mean i don't know man it, i don't know it's not that big a money wise it's not that big a deal right so what makes the mike postle case different than some guy who just uh tries to hustle online some somehow and yeah. just scams like a, a, tra a transaction thing nothing there, there's not you that much right. difference yeah you yeah. said it right that there's no difference in what they did but there's just a difference in publicity and people yeah. call me like joey and and then doug yeah. and a lot of and people you, you as well yeah you as well yeah so yeah it's like that's the thing why why is mike Postle gonna get shit is because of like the community a little bit coming together green um, yeah great for the like that's something i saw with yeah, my yeah. the community finally agreed at the beginning there were a lot of haters and saying no he's just a god right and, and joey was constantly trolling them with his whole oh he's yeah. just a god thing uh, that was actually hilarious at all. and then yeah. finally even the people who were like sort of close to, to my apostle finally admitted that yeah, yeah this can't be right um so but it took so much for people to finally agree on that that that's not okay and i think for other things it's going to be way harder to to find like a mor yeah, moral agreement that that's just not something you want to do and the I think in, in terms of financial incentives, like let's look at, at some of the aspects in poker. I think, for example, affiliation is huge in poker right now um, for some of the bigger affiliates, especially. The small affiliates is going to be tough, but the bigger affiliates, they have basic incentives to sell you a poker site, a product, and it's it's different than it used to be 10 years ago because they get way bigger commissions because the rake is also a lot higher. And they're going to be, um, you know, the bigger affiliates are going to be the main winners beside poker sites uh, next to like some of the top 1% professional, of course, we're still going to win. But um, I think that's, mm -hmm. and, and they're not going to look at it a sense of they want to have a great and reliable and fair product for the people that they can win. But they just like, yeah, if you play on the site, I'm going to get the money. That's the honest answer. That's all there is to it um, for most affiliates i would say there's not anything else to that and yeah. i mean and i'm not saying it has been different 10 years ago in terms of that but the the, the volume is just uh, so different and the sites the the mechanics changed there is um and i, I bet you you've heard about it we discussed it briefly there's like this whole new thing like called pvi player value index extremely dangerous to the poker industry if every site starts creating that which i doubt they will for example i know that I'm pretty sure that, for example, a site like one, running one spoker would never do that, but other sites might follow suit and implement a player value index where the net, no, the, the base rate is just so extremely high that nobody can win. And you would just give money back to people who actually lost. So in the end, you create an environment where only poker sites win and, and not players anymore. And that's against poker players. That's shooting yourself in the foot. If you under, support that sort of you know um regulation then that, that's yeah. that's what you get from it you can no longer win especially as a recreational yeah. as a professional the, i think the issue there is like how are we going to stop it because unless we like it's not one of these things that you can say oh it's like a my fossil thing right like there's so yeah. much money getting like disappear like getting skimmed off the sides and you know like it just disappears into the pockets of these people we don't even know like it's it just disappears like the money is just gone it's, it doesn't get like re redirected into the poker market uh i mean you can shit a lot on stars or whatever but i mean at least they're still trying to do stuff like they're trying to create new games or whatever i mean they're, ta they're taking a lot of money out of the community but like and they don't really have a long-term plan but it's not like straight up scamming like some of these other sites where i mean it, it's gonna it's gonna get like i mean it's like you said uh, i mean i would i would categorize some of it as straight up pyramid scheme where it, it just has to implode at some point like because i mean the money where some of the big money comes from like really dark places i would almost say like at the high stakes at least mm -hmm. and i mean at some point 
it has to, you know, it has to be, you, you don't want to, you don't want regulations, like you said, like you don't want anybody looking at poker. And when, when all these big sites start scamming people, that's what's going to happen at some point. Like maybe UK thing is going to crack down on some of these sites that have like licenses because like this, the, the, like the as the poker pros and the PVP and then stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. All these banners and like license and stuff. And like, yeah, yeah. Just... I mean, I don't know, but that's the thing. Like nobody's really protecting like the players, like not, not the recreational players, not the, the middle pros, not the, the high stakes pro. Nobody's protecting that. Like there's no real protection from anybody. Right. So, and that's why I understand that people sometimes do things that are not, legit because they think like well if i'm not doing it somebody else is going to do it and you know i'm getting robbed and you're getting robbed but it's like this vicious circle that just it's not going to end well i, I would say so you know, you know but that's a lot of what we've talked about is about online poker you know what i what i think um changes your perspective quite a bit um when it comes to poker is when you get into live poker more and i know that you've been at lex live and you enjoyed that but i think that a live poker yeah there's some issues for sure but the transparency in live poker is just a lot lot better and higher and i mean there's, there's bad things like privatization of casino games so the i call them the new school private games i think they're terrible um, i think people should play privately at home and when they go to the casino make it like a public um and yeah you know there's obviously counter side arguments to that that players should just be more inviting to recreational players just be more sociable and and, and just bring some more skills than just their poker ability to the table and i, I would completely agree with that um, but in general uh, i think the live poker industry has a lot more transparency than than online poker of course due to the nature of the game and how, how do you how do you like like how do you think about live poker do you, do you enjoy it in general or not that much at all I mean, now that I quit smoking and I'm better with the drinking, maybe I can play some live. Yeah, uh, that that was like a big issue. Is like I, I get really bored playing live, but it's partly because you know you can't really smoke, and mm -hmm. I get nervous and etc. I go outside. Well, like you know, I get dealt aces or something in my head. I'm like, oh, I'm missing three hands. It might be aces, and uh, you know, you only play like eight eight hands an hour or whatever. You know, so it's it's all like this whole big thing where I just it's not for me. But maybe mm -hmm. now that I quit, uh, quit smoking and I'm better with the drinking, mm -hmm. I could maybe play some live poker. I don't know. Well, we'll see how it goes after this Corona shit, you know? Because I know, like, you know, King's Casino, they don't give a fuck. But, like, other places, yeah, maybe, yeah. Uh, maybe <laughs> you know, yeah. Like Barcelona, they, they, they closed down again, like, after opening. So, yeah. So, it's not going to be year like i usually would take two three live poker trips a year at least be like mm -hmm. out 10 12 weeks a year vegas barcelona um prague and and some of the austrian uh where and live now stops but um yeah i think when it comes to live poker um i've had so many different experiences uh sitting at a live poker table uh, i don't know how often you've played live poker environments so you said you enjoyed lex live but um i think that like one table depending on the characters on the table and it doesn't even matter sometimes whether they're super bad or, or like good or medium. Like, I just think that my experience was so different on live poker table. Sometimes I enjoyed it so much and, and playing mm -hmm. even, even sometimes, honestly, when not winning, I have enjoyed some poker games. Um, yeah, of course, that's been yeah. surprising to me because usually I just hate losing, but then some people have managed to, and I'm not meaning like those, you know, mm -hmm pros or all the pros who try to manage tables, but know, know, yeah, yeah. actually recreationals. And mm -hmm. in my experience, I don't know, the recreationals up to a certain level, they don't even mind good players. Like, of course, they don't love it either, but um, as, as, long as, as long as there's not too much money involved in a live poker game, I think people love it. I think that the money amount is so important where as soon as you play 10, 20 and above, people get just so anxious about the money and everything and just you know that they have to do something that's not true like people are just going to be people in my opinion and, and and it's always been that way that some people don't talk at the tables and they just play their strategy it's not nothing new and people are like yeah there's so, such an urgency for private games there's not man it's just an urgency for people who want to make more money um that they make games private that's it yeah i think i think that's a very important point is like 
a lot of these live games where you have like a very good mix of people you know like some people they let's say it's a 500 dollar tournament right like it doesn't seem that high but for like a normal guy with like a mortgage or whatever it's a lot of money and then like those you understand why those people are like you know like maybe a little bit more serious and then some other guys like i had the same thing in barcelona like i, I met some my like recreational players and i was like i'd rather talk to these guys for you know the whole trip than to hang out with the pros or whatever like it's it's i don't know you have to like poker is such a good like the purity of poker is like anybody can actually play right mm -hmm. and then there, there becomes this thing where we just have to be as a community we just have to be we have to put like maybe the the lines of what's acceptable and what's not a little bit clearer so when like an old guy says something racist everybody at the table has to shit on them has to shit on call the floor say okay this guy out otherwise we all like make a big scene of it because th that doesn't really happen yet and i think it should happen the same thing with sexism i like I, I, for me like it's crazy right like I, I don't go out that much but like i when you sit at a poker table and you're just playing and you're having fun like you know there's like some guy who's talking and then on, on the other table there's like a guy just yelling bitch 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 at a girl and nobody's actually doing anything and i just want to stand up and like punch the motherfucker out like i mean um, and nothing happens right because if you call the floor he gets a warning um, and it just you know he just says it more quietly it, and i and those things are not okay like those things have to go it's just the bystander, right? yeah, yeah yeah they have to go they have to go like we have to and i think it's important that you do it as a community and not just like because if one guy makes a stand against uh the sexist guy or the racist guy it could lead to like confrontation, but if mm. everybody shits on that guy, what what, what is he going to do? Like, if everybody agrees that this is not okay, mm. it's going to be not okay, right? Everybody has to like stand up for everybody else, and then it's like easier to speak out against all of these kind of things, and that makes the overall experience way better without for needing like extra rules or extra regulations. <laughs> it's just like everybody has to kind of like like draw a line in the sand like this is not okay like this is not okay like if if the old guy next to you looks at his cards and you can see them every time you have to say it at least once that sir i can see your cards like if he keeps doing it okay you can take his money right but you have to at least do it once right that's kind of like the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's something like, yeah. yeah yeah that's the thing right? that's kind of like yeah the rule like it's kind of like an unspoken rule that like i mean you don't want to take people's money like that right like you're not gonna tell him that he has like uh every time he has aces he he, he goes like this you're, like you're not gonna tell him that one but if he actually shows his cards you're gonna tell him like you're not obliged to tell him but i mean you should tell him right so there's like these unspoken rules that we yeah. just have to like make maybe make a little bit more clear and maybe like as a community stand up for it and i don't think like for me it would be great if there there would be like this kind of player union in a way i don't know it's it's very tough to do because Everybody has like different incentives and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, in and everybody's India, like involved. Yeah. yeah. There's still that huge money incentive that, that just overshadows yeah. everything else. Like in the end, money talks. And uh, you know, whatever you and I are gonna talk about uh, ethics are like some some etiquette at the poker table. Like who, in the end, who gives a shit? Like we got like 30 people in here who might you guys might give a shit, right? But but a lot of people won't and yeah, the default is really important. Like the first thing that happens when somebody at the table says something racist or um, you know uh, just uh, insults uh, women, then everyone does the following. They just look to the other guys and see what they do. And guess what? Like they're probably gonna look at you and see what you do. And what happens? It's gonna be that's the bystander effect. The more people that are gathered in the room and in poker, unfortunately, that's one negative aspect. There's a lot of people, and where there's a lot of people people actually get away with, with stuff. Like I've, I've got yeah. threats at, at the poker table for calling somebody out for cheating. It's just, you know, it's just standard. Yeah. Some people, some people also love it. They get the kick out of it. They want to be that, uh, you know, guy with money that just can get away with whatever they want. They want to feel super natural or whatever, you know, they, they have like this whole movie thing going in their heads or something that they think there's some 
I don't know, yeah. super villain or some shit, and then uh, yeah. Yeah, it test their test their boundaries, and they they yeah. gotta get off of that or something. I don't know, something seriously wrong with a couple of people. But uh, and th those are the things that you see. Those are the minorities, but that those are affecting the game and making it a lot worse. Even there's just a, a few individuals, or, yeah, or even like the most people are good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because th those things get like enlarged. Like like a lot of women uh, don't want to. I mean, there's more and more women, of course, but like, it's still like a problem. Like, it's really, it really is. Like, you can't dismiss it as something that doesn't exist because there's so. I mean, I mean, I haven't played live that much, and besides, mm -hmm. like these kind of like Lex Live kind of things, mm -hmm. there's a lot of like assholes, man. Like, really, and it's not not necessarily always poker pros. So, like this thing where you have to be nice to the recreational players, it's it's not really a thing like you could, you have to be nice to everybody until like they they do something that's like you have to do something and i understand for sure like this um like a herd mentality where everybody's like looking at each other and see if something anybody does anything because i've been there as well like i've been like something happens at the table and i'm not like not super comfortable because i don't really play live a lot and so I, i'm expecting that like, maybe some somebody else to do something or the dealer to do something and I think like um, somebody has to do something, and I, for me now, I, I think it would be me, right? I, mm -hmm. Now I'm comfortable with uh, who I am, with everybody else. Like I'm, I know where the lines are, mm -hmm. so I, I would stand up for what I think is right. Okay. But I understand that not everybody is comfortable with doing that. I just think like the more we talk about it, or the more we like make like certain things not okay and we keep talking about it it becomes reality I, in, in my opinion without like needing like this big uh, campaigns or something like oh don't don't uh, be sexist or, or don't be racist like it doesn't really work you have to actually do stuff and keep doing it over and over again until it becomes like not okay and then it's then it's gone like i i really believe like th this stuff can just go away like i think like if everybody's like stand stands up for like against people who abuse verbally abuse people it will just go away because uh -huh. if every if, if people who know like that everybody will just like shit on them if they do something bad then they will stop doing that bad thing right because it's still like this thing that people keep doing it because they get away with it like there's like you said there's like no incentive not to do it sometimes you know yeah. and i think it's there, it's important yeah there, there's this one thing that you uh were tweeting about like uh in in 2018 um it was like a, f a, f a funny tweet storm by you which was about the uh high roller scene where you talk about if you were doing i don't know can we i am trying to see whether i i can actually share the screen but uh, maybe for you guys to see here, there's this tweet storm where you start with a fever dream, how to extract value from high rolls by Nick Petrolangelo. Um, yeah. hey, hey guys, Nicky P here with an extra model for upswing. After going deep into theory, it's time to take it to the real world. And uh, yeah, you're making some, some, uh, some really funny uh, comments here about what's going on just uh, I guess impersonating some of the characters that are yeah. in high rolls in. Like what was the, um, what was the overall idea of, of, of that tweet or like your criticism you try to do it in a funny way um, regarding the high roller scene? Well, I think, I mean, there's a couple things. Uh, uh, I think one, one of the reasons that I feel like I, I needed to do something, even if it's like kind of funny, jokingly, like even if I shit on people, it's not like, mm -hmm. they, like they can laugh with it too. Right. Like, I just want to point some things out, right? Because nobody else is doing. Like, I feel like some some things just get ignored. Like the whole Triton thing. Like, I don't know. Everybody's like, oh yeah, that's great. But I mean, these these guys are, you know, they're not. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. But like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not a real. Consequence. It's not a real thing. It's not a real thing. Like, it, it's not actually a million bucks everybody puts on the table like it's it's like yeah, i don't know i don't want to talk about it but like it's not a legit thing you know i mean it's fine that it doesn't really hurt anybody like the the whole thing itself doesn't really hurt anybody but it, it does like legitimate legitimize some of 
some of these guys who, who are not like you know i mean i don't know it's it's hard to i, I don't think it's my job to to talk about that because it's a little bit you know on the edge yeah. i guess but uh I mean, you can look you can look at those guys up sometimes, you know, just Google their names and uh, <laughs> it's not. I, a, it's so uh, funny. I, there's like, I recently watched a lot of, uh, I don't know if any of you watching know the channel Coffee Silla or something, he's talking a lot about scammers and um, multi-level marketing schemes and, and people selling courses for $2K dollars that are, uh, you know, just trying to convince you of the next stream that you can pursue. And, um, one of the videos was about a guy uh i don't know it's called vu or something mm -hmm. and yeah. he used to have these commercials in the 90s um and he would just have like women in the background and just selling that lifestyle and, and invite everyone to his seminar who is like gonna teach them how to do whatever with real estates mm -hmm. and he is like he used to do the same thing that people are doing today with the internet just promoting but but with tv of course yeah, yeah. and um i i look at this guy and say, i know this guy i know this guy from someone so, so i google him i was like Sure, this guy's a poker player. <laughs> this guy is, is like with all that money he made in the nineties from these seminars, he just dumps it on a poker table. There's obviously yeah. lots of these characters that yeah. just you, you don't know where their money comes from. You know, no, it could come no. from anywhere and like yeah. you know, now they're playing poker and <laughs> yeah. yeah. And some things like some things are even if it's like against the law, are okay. You know, you know, if you make a lot of money dealing weed or something it's still fine right like it's in, in 10 years it's going to be uh legal anyway everywhere so I, I, there's like some things that are just not okay right like i mean if, if it involves i don't know human trafficking and all that shit like i don't i don't know if you should like say oh this guy played his hand look at this this is great haha <laughs> good for poker i'm like eh, i don't know man this guy probably has some people in his dungeon <laughs> like it's not okay you know but yeah it's whatever like i don't know I, I like i feel like at least we should be able to make jokes about it right mm. like what what yeah. what, are, what like yeah. how how am i gonna affect these people i'm not right but i still want to like make jokes about it i'm not gonna shut up like so th that's what one of those things is like this like uh thing that we look at these high rollers and we look at them as like heroes or something or like even if people think me take me as like this kind of uh better than the average grinder guy like as a role model okay i mean you know i am of course but like i don't really you shouldn't you shouldn't like make heroes of people who don't deserve it right there's i think that's one of the things maybe it's like a societal thing now is like Everybody's like a hero for doing like the internet makes it so easy to glorify people. I that's yeah, sorry. Like it. It's just so easy. You, you have that and, and the definition of success is is just horrible for the world. Yeah. Like we yeah, just yeah. define success is mostly purely monetarily. And whenever people make money, like you know, and, and the thing is if you look at the other side, when you say that argument, literally when I say on social media, you know, that whole or criticize people for you know, their um, attitude uh, with money and the success, you know what they will say? Yeah, they will say that you have a bad, uh, bad attitude towards money. You know, you're, you think that earning money is something toxic, which I totally not believe. I think if you make it the good way, if you just earn money because you provided a lot of value to people, kudos for you, you know, take all yeah. the money that you want and do whatever, what you think is good with it. But if you just do it in an unethical way and basically preying on the weakest links in our society, um, and I don't think that's what we do with poker, by the way. I, I, you know, because in the end, you all know what happens in poker. There's a yeah. evident truth. Every opponent is there to take your money in poker. It's so honest. Yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah, it's an open open thing, and that's why poker is so great. You know, and it's a war for money. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. they are one actually. Yeah, where yeah. yeah whereas other otherwise people just prey on the weakest links without people actually knowing the rules yeah. of the game for example yeah, with the internet marketing there's no people don't know the rules yeah. they just don't know what they're getting themselves into like if you're constantly bombarded every day with something on your youtube ads and whatever 
at some point you're going to buy shit that you actually don't need at all and it's just gonna and, I mean, and, and that's so, how the way the world like the, yeah. the entire world works like that now is like everybody's just buying sh shit that they don't need it's like the whole thing like <laughs> like the whole yeah. marketing thing is it's so it's so fucked man like and, i mean and, and, like, if, yeah, if yeah. i if i if i would ever stream i would mm -hmm. like do it as a kind of not not like a joke but i would like I, I like this kind of irony stuff where I would play like high stakes poker mm -hmm. and I would start like a, a Marxist utopian cult or something, you know, like something weird shit where I'm you like, enjoy money, satire, yeah, right? like, yeah, 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 like yeah, money is bad, money is bad while I'm like playing high stakes <laughs> yeah. poker or something yeah, like yeah. stuff like that. Like I, I like that kind of humor, you know, like this, yeah. this kind of. I would share that kind of humor because I like that too, like doing something. Yeah, yeah. Like now no, I'm talking to you. Yeah, you have like this kind of. You have. We. I think we. We have like similar thought I've, process. I've, uh, well, I actually thought about making MLM videos, and I'm not sure if I should do that because, like, my idea of MLM videos was to, to you know, act like an MLMer, like someone who tries to get you into an MLM, and just say how, like, just to jokingly say how I'm basically taking your money. You know, mm -hmm. just to, yeah. to just, just to troll people very hard, but I don't know if that would be successful or something. I think uh, it would be, and the, I have to the, do that, though. It's, it's the, not. <laughs> the problem, yeah. The problem with that is like you will, you would actually still feel bad for doing it. You know, like if you do, I, I join, join my join my cult. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> you know, haha. We're making fun of uh, all these MLM things. Give give me your money. I mean, as a joke, you still get their money. You know. Like it's no, you like, would actually not if you get the money. You would just joke about it. You're you're not actually taking the money. Yeah, you just yeah. until they will send you literally the money. Yeah. But until then, you can still joke. No, you wouldn't do it in the end, right? But you would just make jokes about yeah. it. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 I don't know. Like for me, um, I I want to I want to make something. Like I want to um, create something because that that's the only thing in poker that you don't really do is like. It is kind of selfish. I mean, not not more selfish than other kind of jobs or anything. But like, you don't really like just by doing playing poker, you don't really create anything. You know, you just do do something. Well, one of the and things that I think you that, do, that yeah, it's like some. There's just an audio um, break right now. I don't know if you. I think you're disconnecting. Okay, so I'm just, I, I think the stream will continue. Um, so I'm just gonna talk uh, what, like maybe you guys in the chat, there's still 30 people here. Let me know some of the questions that you think that have not get talked about uh, as much. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I think Gareth is, yeah. is just back, yeah. Uh, what I wanted to, uh, you know, basically um, mention is that one of the points that you address that, that in a poker there's not much purpose or something that you could do that with, you actually found partially a purpose, right? You, or uh, because I know you have a lot of love for animals. You like cats, you like um, dogs, and, and, and of course, giraffes and, and, and gooses um, on your, as, as you post them on your social media, because you give um, animals shelter, right? When, when you find them um, just somewhere that they have nowhere to go. That's something you yeah. really think, feel strongly about, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually, I mean, I, I don't know, like, how long I'm going to, I mean, like, uh, I don't know, I don't know, like, uh, let's back it up. I would say, for me, uh, it's because of my girlfriend that uh, I care about animals so much, and it's, I think it's great. It's, like, it, it's changed, it's changed me in uh, probably the best way that it was possible, oh my God, is it gone again? I think I, we hear it should you. Be, it should be back. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can still yeah, hear you. I yeah, I, I don't know what it is. It's like every. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, what I was saying is like, so it's because of my girlfriend that I start like caring about the animals because I think it's one of those things where everybody likes dogs. Or cats, or what, whatever their you know favorite animal is, or you know they see a picture of a, a cute whatever it is, and they're like, oh, animals really think about how we are actually kind of responsible for most animals. Like, I mean, the wildlife thing is one thing, 
mm-hmm. if you think about like all the like e- even like cats and dogs like there's so many that just get i mean put to sleep every day because there is no room in animal shelters like and that's why it's very important for people to uh, I mean, if you can, you should actually adopt a cat or a dog because it's 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 it doesn't only save that one cat or dog. It also opens up like room for another one. Uh, mm-hmm. So it, it's very it's very important that people like try and do something for the animals because we are literally like responsible, especially like let's say let's take dogs for instance, right? Like I mean, we are we we made dogs. Like dogs would not exist without humans. We literally br- bred them, so I feel like humans are 100% responsible for every single dog in the world. We're just we. I feel like we 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 have to take that responsibility. So mm. I think uh, I, it's it's very important. Yeah. So I, I think there's that attitude towards animals. You 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 mentioned that in a tweet. You as like one way for you, or it almost seemed to me when I read uh, some of those tweets, or at least one in particular, where you seem to be really harsh on. The fact that you are playing so much poker and that, that it made you a certain way, and that you feel like with this, um, you know, care for animals, you can somehow, um, yeah, become more empathic and 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 sort of going to that direction, right? Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, I, I mean, for me, it's it's one one of the things that keeps me kind of like uh, somewhat grounded to like real life is. Because you know, I'm I can walk right there, and uh, there's like twelve cats looking at me. You know, I can pet them, and I I know they're real. So it's it's a, it's a real thing, right? Like if you're playing poker, and it's it's not always like clear what you're doing, right? You're just trying to make money. You're, I mean, it's it's it, yeah, cat. Like the animals are real. It's like uh, having a human connection. It's kind of like the same, but like maybe like on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean it's very important to keep like somewhat connected to what's actually important and uh it's like you know i don't know it's tough for me to i don't know it's it's tough for me to explain like what it means to me necessarily i mean it means everything to me at at this point like i'm kind of crazy right now like I I would I would I would kill people for the cats, you know, but that's not like I don't expect other people to do that, right? So I would just say like you should uh you should open yourself up to having a connection with animals because once you once you like a lot of people have a connection with a dog, let's say, mm-hmm. right? Like a dog is kinda easy to connect to because, you know, they're the greatest thing in the world, right? So it's kinda easy. But like all of these other animals are like maybe less uh less in tune with like the humans but they're not like worse than dogs like you think we have a pig you know so the pig is probably same intelligence as most dogs so why are we like eating them right why are we like breeding them torturing them eating them like why i mean it's 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 for me it's tough to at this point to like go back and like see any logic in in like eating animals like for me it's really it's really tough i understand why people do it because it's kind of like the cultural cultural thing is it's Mm -hmm. it's the standard right but it's actually just a choice it's it's a choice right it's actually a choice like you can choose not to eat animals so that's kind of like it should be more talked about in in that sense i actually grew up on a farm so i uh i pretty much uh like i'm like I, I, I guess I like at least uh, twice. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm eating meat a lot and I enjoy eating meat. Uh, but I get that I, I definitely want to like the the whole process of, um, you know how animals get treated is obviously important. Like that they're not like there's masses and how. Yeah, uh, where where the yeah, meat. Yeah, comes the thing is from. like it's like just, you you grew, you, your parents were uh, maybe farmers or your grandparents or something. Like that. And my grandparents yeah 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 so but it's not the same right like it's probably like a, a forum where you know animals are running out like outside and stuff maybe it's milk yeah. i don't know uh yeah it's what, mostly from milk but then now of course in the end they are uh so solid and you can yeah, yeah. Eat, so yeah but like a lot of milk let, let's take for example milk for farms are not profitable anymore especially like the, the smaller ones like smaller scale 
they just are. don't make any money anymore. And the only way to make money is to kind of like treat the animals as things like they like, I mean, I'm pretty sure like your grandparents, even though maybe they're like, they, they didn't think about the cows as uh, sentient beings or like uh, deep, deeply philosophical thoughts, but they will, they would probably still treat them with respect and, you know, not like beat the shit out of them every day or, you know, stuff like that. And now like the big things, like the big farms, the only ones that actually make a little bit of money, they're like, they only make money because they torture animals mm -hmm. and they just competed all the other farms out of it. Like they don't, they don't exist anymore. Like the small farms don't really exist anymore. It goes, into the, profitable. It goes into the big picture of the problem with capitalism. And there's actually, I haven't found really the English literature or maybe it is translated, but I or haven't read the English literature on capitalism and criticism. But there's like one German book, which is about having and, and being and like it, it criticizes the capitalism for like the system that it is. It, it, the, the point about capitalism is to not make us human beings thrive but it's to make the system thrive it's the system is really about making the system go get bigger yeah. it's not it's not really to optimize how we as a society or as individuals are doing afterwards mm -hmm. so there's a lot of criticism in that book about um you know uh the economy growing like is it really necessary? Like, is it really necessary that everyone works 40 hours? Obviously as a poker player, I don't think so. Um, if, if, like I, I wouldn't want to actually have a regulated job right now and just work 40 hours a week. Um, I obviously would have, I don't know, how about you? Like, what would you think is like an optimal way for, for a person to, to be able to li live life um, apart from what I mean, you it's do? Really, it's really, it's really tough, right? Because I think like for me, uh, I think about like the bigger picture a lot, uh, but that's because I'm kind of like privileged to have time and not having to worry about like very immediate things like feeding my family or something. Like if, yeah. if you have to work 40 hours a day or even more to just, you know, keep a roof over your head and uh, feed your family, I'm not going to criticize people like that for not thinking about the bigger picture because they cannot afford to think about the bigger picture. And then like, I feel bad because I'm like privileged to think about it, to even just think about it, you know? So I'm not going to criticize people for, you know, living in this capitalist uh, society where it's kind of like everybody being selfish leads to, uh, like a more prosperous society. That's kind of like how it works a little bit. But at the same time, like you said, it doesn't really like in the long run, it just, it, uh, e even without like people scamming, like the politicians and the big corporations, like buying votes and shit like that, even without that, like capitalism leads to a very big inequality. Like I, I saw like some study where, they would just like throw the dice like a, a lot of a lot of time in the in the sense of like free market capitalism and it's not like everybody gets a, a, the same piece it just ends up like with one or two or three out of the hundred that have every everything and it's it's and that's the problem with like capitalism is like without uh protections of like the bottom uh and i would include like animals in that uh, like all the sentient beings without protecting like the the most vulnerable uh it just leads to like absolute destruction of all moral all morals and it's just it's it's it, it's there's no good end game to capitalism like there's mm -hmm. no good end, end game to capitalism like the, the 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 reason like why i mean i don't know it's it's tough to talk about like communism or marxism without like you know it's communism or marxism like it, it has like heavy red bad thing read? but like at least have you read the books like um, what? Marx? Have you read Marx? The, um... Uh, um, I haven't read the Marx uh, himself, but I read a couple things uh, like later later things about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, for me, it's it's like it needs like this kind of revolution of the the people, and after that, like it's like the goal is to have a society that runs itself, like people just do things because there's no possessions, etc. Mm -hmm. But like, to get there, I just don't see it happening. Like, 
Mm. I mean, some like e even if you look at societies where it kind of worked out, like Cuba a little bit, and uh, there's a couple of other ones where there's like a high level of so social things going on, uh, even more than in Europe, I would say. Like e even in Europe, like if you think it's very different than than America, like the USA, right? Like here, we're like if you if you break if you break your leg, you're not gonna die, right? Mm. In America, if you break your leg, there's like I mean one in thirteen, I think <laughs> you can't afford it and you just go broke and there's a big chance that you die, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's I don't know. There has to be like a system that starts with like recognizing that everybody is kind of like in the same boat. Mm -hmm. I think capitalism is not that thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like capitalism is very, like yeah. aimed towards, yeah. And the the more I talk with players like you, right, uh, I I realize that you know a lot of the poker players that have that privilege of having time and having earned, uh, you know, some some money through poker, I realize that it's a it's a common theme that, or at least a lot, uh, will think about the world, um, and the, I would almost call it that poker players have an affinity towards payout structures. Because we play poker tournaments, we know when a payout structure is inherently unfair. So mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think that applies a lot to the world. Like, yeah. look at how money is just distributed. And as a poker player, you're so like, of course, most people will realize that. I'm not saying other people aren't, but I think poker players are even more realizing how, how drastic it is, how the payout structure is like literally so top heavy that it just can't be like that, yeah. you know? And, and the, the problem is the thing I, I think I said earlier about the, about the success definition is that we still glorify um, certain ideas to get to the top, to be successful, uh, and then like, getting the majority of, of a piece through means that are inherently unfair. Um, and I think, yeah, I think people, poker players sometimes see, like, especially when you have time and when you have thought about that, when you're not like just in the grind, but you have time to think, then you see those things. You just see the payoff structures and um, how they are ridiculous. Yeah. yeah um, it's true. Uh, I, I think, I think, yeah, I think it wouldn't hurt for more poker players or uh, to go like maybe into politics instead of business. Of course, it's very obvious that like, if you don't scam in politics, you're not gonna make any money, right? Mm -hmm. Like people don't like everybody's saying, oh, politics get they get paid a lot. But if you look at it, they don't really get paid that much, right? Like it's you don't become like a millionaire from even like being prime minister in uh or whatever, mm -hmm. like president in Austria or uh Swiss in, in like, Switzerland it's two hundred K a year. How much? Two hundred. Two hundred yeah. So yeah, one it's 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 nothing right but if you look at like after their careers they probably have like mansions that are like three million four million and then and then nobody well, asks nobody asks why questions and even if like, in switzerland after four years they will still get the salaries or like a part of it or something i just recently was in the u.s as well so in switzerland you you have like a running salary even if you stop if you're like one of the highest sevens so it's yeah. it's pretty pretty well paid but i get what you're saying like the bribe money like the bribe money yeah. that is huge and people will obviously yeah. take that a lot yeah and it's not not even like uh, black money bribes it's just like oh uh yeah. you you're guaranteed uh, a seat on the board of this company and this company and this like in belgium it's like a big issue where like politicians they can actually while they're still in politics they can still you know, sit on the board of like 20 different companies and get paid like for money. They, they don't actually do anything. It's just by title. So that's mm -hmm. why they all, they make all the money. So if you're like uh, a legit guy trying to do something in politics and you're like successful in, you know, poker or like business even, why would you go into politics? Because there's no money. In, like, like you said, there's no real incentive to, mm -hmm. to do good things sometimes, you know, and that's, that's like a real issue. And uh, like it always ends up like this kind of like metaphysical, philosophical conversation, while like the real issues are very material. Like the real issues are very material. So it feels like stupid to talk about like a philosophical point of view sometimes if people are literally starving and all you have to do is like give them money or something, you know? But the problems don't get solved by 
giving money sometimes, you know. I oh, just yeah. they did test that quite a bit, like the um yeah, the whole charity thing is oftentimes very inefficient. That's why also, you know, I like direct charity that they try to make it efficient. Because a lot of times, yeah, making it super inefficient and you know, the money getting trickled down through all, everyone involved and everyone needs a, still a piece of it, even though they work voluntarily. It's it's just mm -hmm. pretty, pretty silly. But yeah. And that's also actually a reason why, like, I just, like, have all these animals here. Because if you give money, like, you do it for, I mean, you do it for selfish, selfish reason almost, right? Like, just to feel good is like a big reason why you help other people, which is good. I think it's a, it's a, it's a very good reason to help other people is because it makes you feel better. It's a, it's a very good reason to do it. But like for me, it's it's tough for me to help people because I know it's very hard to make people happy, right? Like even if you actually like feed people, they're, they don't necessarily are happy, you know? Like it's very hard to make people happy with simple things while with, with it. Why, 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 why do you think that? I mean, especially with people who have nothing, don't you think that when they have that something, they will be pretty happy? They're, they they're more, more happy, but they're not yeah. like, like, like we, 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 we're not always happy. You know, we, we have like a pretty good life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So like for me, like the cat is super easy to make happy. Like you just feed it and you give it a roof and it's happy. Like it doesn't need anything more. So it's very clear, like the purpose, uh, of things mm -hmm. I do have like a direct consequence to like the happiness of, of this cat or this dog or this chicken. Like, even if it's not as noble as to like save a person, it has like, you know, that it has like this effect with people. It's not always easy. Of course. I mean, I would, I would of course do a lot of things uh, to help other people, but it's, it's not, it's not always easy. I would say. Okay. Very, it's very tough. Yeah. yeah. I just think it has like more consciousness, not just humans, but also you say like just a species of what's living on the world. You don't think of it of, yeah, just, yeah. So the, you might say that it's more noble to help human beings, but that you just think about animals as well as being, you know, yeah. part of the yeah, living. Yeah, like it's, it's, mm. it's like if you think, like the thing is, right? So if you look at it one a case, case by case basis, it's always better to, you know, help uh, people who are, like at the worst possible spot, right? Like people who are literally like going to die, it's better mm -hmm. to help them than it's, it is to help like a guy who, uh, you know, needs a little bit more food or something like that. It's always better to help like the bottom because it, it has like this real effect, I think, uh, in the long run as well. But it's very tough to do that in a capitalist society because in a capitalist society, you need people to starve. You need people to to be willing to work for shit, like for nothing. It's it's like that's the problem with with the society is like it doesn't want to actually help people. It it needs like poor people, you know. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's kind of like that's you know. And then if you think about like in, a, in an even bigger, uh, like a little closer to like purely philosophical thing, is is like. If you go outside the the world, right? Like we know, uh, like I have a very similar experience to life as you do, or even like some guy I never met in Pakistan. I know he has like a similar experience to life as I do. I know it's real, right? Or at least most people think it's real. Like some people think it's a, a simulation or whatever. But like even then, like I know your your experience of life is kind of similar to me to mine. I know it's worth it, right? And then if you think about the animals, it's also worth it because even if it's like less, um, like they experience like less emotions or less like complex uh, things, they still have like the basic thing of like being alive is, is mm -hmm. worth something. And then if you think about like what is out there besides the planet that we know of, there's nothing, man. There's like emptiness for millions of light years well, so there's nothing we might, we might just know it, it, yeah. it could be whatever and yeah. like, yeah. it doesn't matter in like our so i think we should do everything in our power to like i mean at least have a better society than we have right now mm. it, it, it should be everything like we should strive we should give up rights 
uh, that we have to help other people. We should do it, but it's it's not that easy, of course. I'm, I'm, the people in power, you know. I, I think it's it's, however, if if you focus on on these areas and if you think about capitalism and, and all the scams, etc., it's easy to get. Uh, you just, I don't know, you get biased towards negativity or negative events and you don't see all the positivity that people have accomplished because I try to read something that this confirms those beliefs a little bit. So I started reading more about, for example, uh, there's like one book, The Joy of Movement, which is more about exercise and what people manage to overcome obstacles and how they better themselves or how they, you know, just do, you know, in incredible things for their current situation in terms of exercise and how how, ha how much happiness it gives them. Um, trying to read like something like, I don't know, have you uh, heard about the book Sapiens? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And I think the, those books can really, I think, help to, to see the big picture because sometimes you're zooming in a lot on, on capitalism on these problems and then you don't see the big picture of actually a lot of people uh, at the same time, there's obviously very few people who pull the strings of the world. I would say there's yes, 1% or less at least, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and that's few people, right? And the majority of people, mm -hmm. actually, I, in my opinion, they try hard. I would say I try hard and I would say you do and, and most of the people mm -hmm. that I know. And then there's only this, the minority that actually does stuff that will pull things in a, in a bad way. And um, I think that most people that, you know, there's a lot of good. Um, and I, I see yeah. the more I focus on it and uh, the more I, I try to understand how we can convince other people to do more of that good as well. Um, difficult. Well, I, yeah, I agree. I agree completely because, I mean, you can look at it uh, very, like, maybe like in the sapient sense of it is like, if you look at like a child, an eight, eight year old, like mm -hmm. they're all good. They're all good. I mean, there's maybe a couple of psychopaths in there, but like, they're all like basically good people. Right, because they're not, they don't have like this the thing that we have, right? This like, uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like, so I believe that most people, like ninety nine, like you said, like at least ninety nine percent of the people are like good meaning, well meaning people. Uh, and the problem is, is that society is designed by high functioning uh, sociopaths so that high functioning sociopaths can succeed so that's a, that's the problem right like it's like it's for point. for like good people there there's room to succeed for sure but there's always like it's kind of like there's a cap you know if you it, really want to be so a billionaire easier, so much easier if you're a villain yeah yeah i mean like it's 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 so much easier to be like if you're if you have no morals it's so much easier to become like filthy rich yeah. or you know yeah. I mean, if you, yeah, so all these sociopaths, like, they do really well because, yeah, they get away with it. That's the problem, right? I think so, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you still have to have that sociopath personal and everything. You have to, but, like, it's, I, I think it, it, it has to be super easy for, for people with no morals. It's just, like, you just look at the whole laws of survival of, is the fittest, how people are, look for the weakest links, think of, things to uh, how to exploit um, as hard as possible. They, you see that as a poker player, you, you you kind of understand how someone might actually go about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, because you have all these different data points that you think about that, you know, you would you could even make the plan yourself, but it would be against your moral compass. You could literally not do it because you feel like it's wrong, right? It's yeah. more wrong, but you would at least see the blueprint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah, I yeah. see the blueprint. I, I, yeah. I, I, Mm. I see how other people put it into action. Um, mm. It's not that hard to understand. If um, just some some rapid questions, if you have like people in the chat right now, yeah. like they they see your success, how how much money you made with online poker tournaments, and now they, it's twenty twenty. And yesterday I actually released a video talking about um, you know being a poker pro in twenty twenty and why you shouldn't quit your job. Um, maybe you can make some arguments what how people can make it part time how can they make it in poker tournaments um, if you had to give them a, a, some step blueprint blueprint on how to pull it off in 2020 give people some hope <laughs> um, so i think there's two ways to do it uh, one way is to aim for the top right like to aim for to have like a 3 4 year 5 year plan to become the best player right so mm -hmm. 
that's one of the things you can do, uh, which is very hard, I would say. I think, especially these days, like, I mean, there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of uh, content out there that can get you from, I mean, it's always been like that, I guess, from like the bottom all the way to a reasonable, like co competent player. And then the next step is like really like the the top. I think that's that's always been kind of like the same thing, but now it's maybe a little bit more extreme. But it's accessible to everybody still. I would say there's no like secret information besides like maybe some personal solvers, but you can you don't need them. So I don't think that's necessary. Uh, so you can still do it if you want to. It's just you have to actually do it, and that's always a tough part. And the other part is like. Depending on where you live, how much money you need, you can, you know, like get to a certain level and just make enough money to survive. And it's still going to be better than most jobs, uh, depending on where you are. You know, like if if all you need is, let's say, 2K a month or something, um, you could still do it. I, I would say maybe not like it's, it's hard to say like part time. It might be tough, but. On a, on a, yeah, I think it's, it's still possible. It's still possible. It's less than a hundred dollars a day, so you just need yeah. to find people who will lose a hundred dollars to you per day. And I, I mean, guess. So. Yeah, and if you wanna, if you wanna, like, uh, I mean, you could also like try and get lucky and win a bracelet and become like a coach. <laughs> I think that's still like uh, maybe a good plan you know and just sell shit for a lot of money i mean i don't know but i, I don't i don't i don't think that's like a bad thing or anything it's just that's just the way things work right but uh yeah you can do that like i, I would say uh you can still do like tournament wise you can still just get to a certain level where you can be comfortable making more money than a normal job uh Unless you're, you know, in I don't know Singapore, where it's like five k a month to live or something, that's gonna be tough. I think like if you select tournaments well and you play like five days a week at least, I would say uh, study a little bit, just keep up with the game. It's not gonna die. It's not gonna die. It's 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 gonna shrink time by time. I think in October after uh, W Coop, it's gonna look like it's going to die because <laughs> the crash is going to be very big in my opinion, but it's still going to be there. Like everything's going to be there. So you just have to find spots, I guess. And just, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. In Greece, I mean, you can make the problem in Greece is, uh, you have to try and avoid taxes, which you really should because fuck the government, right? Fuck the government, especially in Greece as well. Fuck them all. <laughs> so yeah. So, the, the, yeah. Yeah, we've got all in path asking who's your favorite streamer. Uh Pablo Fitch. No, I don't know. Um I like all of them, man. I like all of them. I like I really I really like people who put themselves out there, even if it's you know, not on a like entertainment level, uh like a high entertainment level, but like if you put yourself out like even like you you put yourself out there, all right? Like you open yourself up to just like random people saying stuff to you that's gonna affect you even if you don't want to like it, it's I, I think it's very under underrated like just putting yourself out there on the internet it's uh it's it's uh it's a tough thing to do man so and then if you can do it well so i think like the um, the three poker star guys like the high the, the mm -hmm. uh, yeah lex of course is pretty good i would say uh, my, he seems early now, so I don't watch him. I don't watch too much Path either because it's late. Mm -hmm. I sometimes catch uh, some streams, so I, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I like all of them, man. I like uh, some of the party guys as well. I like the Staple Brothers as well. Like it's they're all like different, different. You know, yeah. for me, I like, I like uh, because, like for me, I like different kind of kind of things. So I like looking at something and figuring out like why does this work or is this guy doing an act or is it like a real thing like i like think about the 
the dynamics behind just mm -hmm. the the main things. So. And I guess you enjoy looking at the experiences of, of these players who do the same thing in poker and maybe also outside of poker, but that you see what well, yeah, what they're thinking, what, what how they go about what they do in poker, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Who, who, I, I don't who, watch yeah. a lot of cash cash games guys. Yeah. Just, yeah. You know, Understandable. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the, you thing is, the thing with tournaments is like you don't need to create a narrative because winning a tournament is the narrative, you know. So mm -hmm. with, ca with cash, it's a little bit different. Like you need that's why it's so popular. That's why yeah. it's so popular. I should get back to tournaments. Like I, I have to get some people me, uh, have me fired up for tournaments again because I, I lost it a little bit like last year. So it's just mm. like it's tough, la man. It's yeah. tough. It's tough. It's I, tough. La last tournament two weeks that I played was. 2019 in May and I ended up with a you know it was like grinding for 11 days straight and on the last freaking day I binked the 50k dollars or 46k in, in the 109 um, PLO tournament and that was so surreal right like I was just I was like down 10k or something and then I, I just lost everything and then I just won it all back plus more and on the last mm -hmm. day but since then I just basically stopped it's like okay I'm not gonna yeah. do this anymore just play PLO cash it's <laughs> like the thing is right Stop. like it's one of those things where, when you're in it, like I was like, you don't realize how tough it is mentally. Now that mm -hmm. I took like a break and I trying to get back into it and I still lose my mind if I lose a flip or, you know, I, I like there's one of those things in tournaments where you know that the guy isn't bluffing, but you still call, you know, that kind of thing. It's uh, and that, that shit tilts me still. And uh, yeah, I, I, I still get super angry. And uh, I think with tournaments it's just like the level of mm. i mean because you can you can play a tournament for 11 dollars but if you lose that flip at the you know to bust 13th it's actually a flip for like 10k or something it's not like just the 11 dollars so like the value is uh, sometimes hard to deal with I would the say. end game is pretty big stakes sometimes people don't see that like it's like playing 25 50 mm -hmm. the variance in the end game is not that high if you think about it in reference of 25 50 50 100 dollars because that's what you end up playing in those tournaments you play mm -hmm. high stakes at the end of the of every final table um and at the beginning it's like it's micro stakes you know it's not it's not much um, much of a deal or mid stakes at best yeah yeah the what i what i wanted to ask is the well, the tournament scene, what do you, would you say is like a realistic um, amount? Like how much cash do you need to have per year? And what, like in ROI, that do you think like you make 30K a year, 40? I mean, if you play for yourself or... Yeah, I mean, purchase for yourself, yeah. yeah. So, okay. I think you need to play... I mean, you can actually do it playing kind of low uh, ABI, I would say, like... Mm -hmm. 30k is not that much if you play like high volume. So let's say you have like a 10% ROI, you can probably get away with like playing $40 ABI, I think. So you make like four bucks every game. It's not that it's not that hard to play like 10k games in a year, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's how that, that's how much I've played lifetime. <laughs> yeah, but I mean if you play like yeah, yeah sure. I mean, it's easy to, to find like the low stakes games. Like if you just pick some sites, uh, you know, if you mix in some turbos with a little bit lower ROI, you can still, you know, so you can, it's, it's doable. The only issue is like the mental game is still tough because even at low stakes, the variance is still kind of high. Like it's still mm -hmm. higher than most people think it is. It's really, yeah. <laughs> you can, you can, uh, you can drop a lot of buy-ins. Even as a winning player, you can drop a lot of buy-ins, and yeah, it's tough. Especially in large fields, going. you have to game select yeah. and make the fields really small, so you have like more sit and go experience, and yeah, yeah. or yeah. or like have a massive ROI, right? Like the higher your ROI, mm -hmm. the less the variance becomes. So that's why that, my gra yeah. that's why my graph is a uh, straight up, of course, because you know <laughs> you get fifty percent uh, in it. Is, is that your your speech? Like you get fifty percent in everything you reach? Yeah, or, that was the that was the. That was my joke, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's only it's only half a joke, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I used to I used to actually have like I was pretty comfortable. I could play like the the big one hundred nine and make fifty bucks, but now no, I, yeah. I probably I probably make like less than five percent now in the big one hundred nine because the term is absolute trash now. It's all regs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow, I'm surprised that he would say like 
less than five. Okay. I don't know. Like you can you can check some graphs, and the big one on nine is pretty bad. I would say like mm -hmm. the bounty builder five thirty is probably a better tournament than a big one on nine. Like you okay. have to pick uh, pick your tournaments, I guess. That's a lot of variance there with a low RI. I wouldn't want to. Yeah, no, no, it's it's a uh, that's why like people shit on stables and backers and stuff. But like if you think about the variance, man, you need a lot of money <laughs> to play. Uh, to play like even the the mid the higher mid stakes, you need a lot of money. Because For sure, the variance, the variance is just crazy, right? If you at, at the same it. at the same time, long term trajectory. If you give some of your profits off, like I I always like last seven years, there's like only once where I didn't play with my own money. And I immediately yeah. stopped it after like two months because it was like for high stakes, basically. And uh, I just realized like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to make enough money if I have like a 50 50 cut or something, yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Didn't I mean, I, I had to play with a backer because, you know, like a lot of tournaments, then, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you have no money, uh, you, you need to find somebody to put you in or you have to build it up from nothing, which is, you know, it's a good thing. Like if you can do it, it's good. But like for me, it was like a good deal because they were really good at coaching and stuff. So without mm -hmm. them, I would have wouldn't have been like, I wouldn't have yeah. gotten that much money anyway. So yeah. I think it's... I mean, if you do like a 50-50 cut, they have to coach you, I think. Because otherwise, mm -hmm. it's you're, you're just giving money away, right? Just for the sake of variance, it's, it doesn't matter. There has to be like some coaching. Yeah. That's why I, I, I don't think yeah, just putting up the money is worth half of it. It's, no, it's just yeah. not. You have to have so. coaching. Yeah. yeah. What, who do you think would be great as the next guest for the Poker Player podcast? Who would you be interested in? I mean, probably you don't know who was on the podcast so far, but like just uh, someone know, maybe. Yeah, I saw like Jamie, uh, Jamie Kerstetter. I saw that that one. Okay. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let me think about this. Yeah, you can. You can also let me know later uh, as well mm, if, no, if you have no. someone in mind. No. Yeah. I think. Uh, I think like maybe we should like as a poker player community, we should maybe try and reach out a little bit more to like the gaming community. Mm -hmm. I think uh, because there's a lot of overlap and I think there's not a lot of uh, like mixed thing like uh, all of the poker players play video games and very little of the gamers play poker and it why not right like mm. I don't know like I, I understand why they don't want to stream because Rec Recfuls actually play poker right yeah I know I know yeah yeah, mm. yeah but like the, there's thing with like the sponsors and stuff like regular sponsors don't want to be involved with uh gambling i guess so that's the that's one of the issues of getting like normal people because like the thing with the rex also right like the thing that i don't like about rob uh, rob young's like marketing scheme with the real names and stuff is like mm -hmm. he's he's uh, he's targeting like these live pros or like th these guys who play in the weekends you know like a 50 dollar tournament or a 100 dollar tournament so he wants them to play you know, online, right? Like, just play their tournament. So he's targeting those guys, but I don't think these people want to play online. Like, they, it's a different thing, right? So I think we should more cater again, like we used to do, or as a community we used to do, is like, you can make it in poker. Like, you can still become like, successful uh, and make money, make a living playing poker, and then just the racks still like the thing. The the illusion is always like. The regs know that they're losing money, that they're just dumping money just for the experience. Like, how many regs just dump money for the experience of playing online poker? Like, very little, man. Like, everybody thinks they can win. You know? Yeah. Everybody thinks they can win. E even if they think like the chance is low, that or like less than 50 50, they still think they have a chance. And this is like getting lost a lot in the marketing. Is like, everybody's like, oh, yeah, uh, if you're a rec, we're going to take your money slower or whatever it's like the whole marketing thing now <laughs> it's 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 horrible it's horrible i think like we have to target people who want to make it in poker and give them a shot to try and make it and if they don't succeed we get their money you know that's the thing like mm. i don't know like this this whole mm -hmm. people who dump money for the fun of it it's it's not a it's not a real thing in my opinion i mean maybe at the highest stakes yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's the thing. At the highest stakes, you need like the whales and stuff. Yeah, so the game gets gets running, and yeah. Well, that, even that, though, that, like even then, like if I play a high stake, 
if I play high stakes with the, the sharks, I lose money as well. So you know, mm. why not target me uh, to play like uh, 25k? I'm I'm losing money as well. I'm losing it slower than uh, uh, you know, like Bill Perkins. But I'm also losing money if I play against five Stevie. So why not target me? Mm -hmm. Why not like try and get like people from lower stakes to build up like they used to be like you could try and get to the high stakes and then dump all your money to you know you're in danger and mm -hmm. move back down again and still and, and like win money from people who are worse than you like the whole economy right it's it's weird man like i just don't really understand what's going on like it's always very short term uh, thinking, I think. Yeah, but but oftentimes I think is there even a solution to it because I think there is just a development of the poker industry and how the money flows. Right at the beginning, yeah. like there's more and more transparency of who's winning the money, or at least or who is not able to win the money. I guess right mm -hmm. because over time people get their data, they see that it's not really possible anymore. And like if if that's really true, like then then I think the the marketing towards that dream is, is also disingenuous, right? Like, it, sure, people will still use it and say, well, you can also do it, but is it really what, what we want? Is it really that we want to convince people who clearly ha not have a shot that they have a shot? You know, I guess it's also not the, the right way. Yeah, in I mean, a tournament, I mean, but, but, but then in the end, tournaments, I think, for example, let's say a $500 tournament, um, I would say that obviously in a live poker setting, because there's so much variance, you don't play many hands, et cetera, almost anyone has a shot at like just pinking you, right? So in that sense, that dream is still alive. Like you can so short term, mid term, you can still make it in a year. You can have a profitable year as a bad player just because you got lucky once in a tournament. Yeah. And uh, I guess that with the whole platinum pass experience, PokerStars tries to sometimes put that story out there that people, you know, they can qualify. Yeah, yeah. I think that is really important that, that you give people these qualification routes that they can get into a big tournament because yeah. their stuff will happen. If they get yeah. into even a 10K or 5K and they can make a run, yeah, they, they are, their mm -hmm. RI is going to be minus 50 or minus 30 yeah. or whatever. They're, they're going to be really bad at RI, but yeah. they can still, you know, win in that tournament. Um, and I think catering towards that single tournament experience is, is, is fine because that's not disingenuous. That's true. People can win. But like saying the whole, like looking at it at the big picture and saying, well, you can still grind it out. I think that's, a, that's oftentimes a lie that's told in poker. Yeah, you can still, well, because, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I understand what you mean. Yeah, maybe that's yeah. true. Maybe that's true. Yeah, but like I, the, the, plat the, the platinum fasting, I, I think is by far the best promo any site put put out there and i still think it's they still kind of like underdo it a little bit i mean they they try but it's still not i don't know i, I feel like it's all there's there's way less creativity in the poker world than uh there should and other be. industries yeah yeah even, even if you look at the streamers right like i like all of them but mm -hmm. there's nobody really doing this like new things or like i, I know it's very hard like it's not for everybody but like there's nobody mm -hmm. really you know, like creating like this extra narrative or, you know, I don't know. It's all like personalities, right? It's all like, here's my personality. I play poker. Come and watch me. And I can, or I play poker tournaments for the yeah, most yeah. part. If you want to yeah, be yeah. watched, then that's what you have to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I think that's fine, but I feel like there should be more. Like, I don't know. I think there's room for more. Like For, for me, events. Yeah, or, or yeah. for like promo-wise or... Like creating like uh, products uh, mm. around poker. Like you have you have Joey as the big uh, like independent guy who mm. creates content, and he's great. But there's if he he took a break for a while, and Dog isn't doing poker anymore. Mm. Everybody else is kind of like very small, very niche kind of things. Like yeah. you, I mean, yeah. you, you have your audience for sure. Uh, but I I. I I don't know why you're not like really blowing up a little bit more. I, I mean, because poker industry is so small, right? And then I think I yeah. cater towards a specific uh, target audience. I mean, I'm not, I'm not. First of all, I'm not telling the same stories as most streamers are. Like, I'm not playing tournaments. I, I, it's just not the same thing. And uh, people, I think, f what they want from my content is to learn about poker, the industry, how to be successful. I think people will be vicious, or they just. Yeah, want to see through my eyes how I will maneuver in this yeah. industry a little bit, and then, then of course through you as as my guests, right? Yeah. Uh, if I have a podcast, I think it's a good way of mixing up my content. I have a few other ideas, but I always think about well, 
when I when I make that new content, okay, who, what, what am I really? How how is this attractive to some you know new audience yeah, or yeah. you know someone even coming into poker? Um, it's actually a tough thing to solve, and I think yeah. you need a little bit of support of the masses. I think that one of the things that gets underestimated is community. Um, it gets more done with streaming and and these Twitch streamer communities that people subscribe, etc. And there's you know there's a there's a Discord where people share their poker experiences, and mm -hmm. I think that gets done more and more now. But I think that that still only happens online, and it doesn't happen as much like now. It's COVID time, right? Mm -hmm. But I think maybe for next year, or 2022, um, we could see more of not just like Lex Live, but also other events. I would, for example, wish for poker that not just the Kings Casino had the events or like Barcelona, but that there will be other um, attractive venues for player to go to to have an experience not just with the poker game that they're playing, but to maybe know that they, yeah, that they have a shot at the 1K $500 buy-in that they play, yeah. but that, that there's stuff around that, you know, that there's, mm -hmm. and not just like these stars fun activities where you can just laser tag stuff or just something, which is cool, it's mm -hmm. fine, it's some, or sometimes they did, a, you know, stuff like a city tour or something, that's, that's, that's cool, but there, I think there can be, you know, more can be done yeah, that, more more. that the experience is just better. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Like, yeah. like I think Lex Live is going to open, like, because the success of it, mm -hmm. like, literally, like, getting people that are in the community all together and actually having a good experience, whatever, whatever they do, like, whatever event it is, it doesn't really mm -hmm. matter. It's just because all the people are together and, oh, that, that's this guy or that this guy. And then mm -hmm. it becomes like this thing where, yeah, it's it's. I think it's great, and I think it's 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 gonna open the uh, it up mm. for a lo lot and, more. And those events, I think, they should be less marketing heavy. Like the event, the purpose of the event should not only be to sell your courses, sell your coaching on server. Like I'm, I'm personally somebody that I don't push my coaching agenda, for example, on YouTube. Like I used to mention I it. Know, I didn't even know that you coached, man. I do. I coach PLO players. Yeah, but yeah. but <laughs> like because I, I think like the people who want to, that they will find me anyway. Right, so they really want to work, and and it's not good if I push the dream of making it big onto like individuals, because then I will get the wrong clients, etc. It's not really something that that helps helps me long term. Um, and I think a lot of people forget about that. They they try to push, yeah, they they try to sell something that's not beneficial to some people. That's yeah. really not really worth it. Like there's so many people that buy poke courses and other courses and. They, you know, some of them might get better, but a lot of them just buy it and never watch a single video of the course. And of course, it's their responsibility. But at the same time, you can see that a lot of people use, um, you know, this neural NLP stuff where you use word like, you know, crushing it and you can come the best or, you know, can do the same. And just using this, like, crushing is like that one word that you see like across everyone. And it's like, why do you have to use it? Like, why can you say like beat the games or something like more neutral? But as soon as people make the language so hyped up, I think that it it just makes people buy that that will not watch a single video, yeah. um, and that's not the point, right? It's, it's just like transferring money from people who who already have poor bankrolls to people who have large bankrolls, and then it's like even yeah. yeah, they have even less money to even play a poker tournament. So it's yeah. whatever. Yeah, I I, I kind of want to make like uh, some course or something, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm still looking like how to sell it basically. Because mm -hmm. mm. I mean I'm not good at promoting shit like for real. Like I like my 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 thing is like I'm always thinking about jokes, right? And I'm always like, okay, what if I my, my joke is right now in my head is like I'm gonna call it how to crush online poker in 2018. And I'm, mm -hmm. you know, release it now as like kind of joke, right? Because that's when I won all the money, and now I'm like break even guy. <laughs> okay, so yeah. that's kind of the joke. But uh, people like don't like people don't really people aren't gonna buy it because they think it, that the content is gonna be a joke. So then you have to like start making like serious like promo shit, and that's not for me. So mm -hmm. I rather just like make make something good, and then find a way to sell it to like people who can it's, it's actually less it. important i feel like i think that that really the solid solid advice and solid material is almost less important than the marketing like the marketing behind it is so huge like just 
twisting your graph. Like the first question you always get is like, yeah, what are results? What is the graph? And then you just tweak the graph into a certain time period where you crush the most. And then everyone's like, yeah, yeah, I want to buy. I want to have the same because it's just about that, that the magic pill that you get. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, did, I just want to do the same. I want to have the same result at this person. It's not really, I want to put in the sweat, the hard work and everything. It's just going to be mostly that pill that you can take. And then you just have the same experience whatsoever. And that's, that's unfortunate um, yeah, reality, I, I think for it, a lot. It sucks, right? Because like, I actually want to make like good, con like there is good content out there. Like, yeah, that, yeah, I, agree. I think yeah. uh, it's worth a certain amount of money. And then I see the price and I'm like, well, this is like three times what I think it's worth, right? So, mm, but people too, still yeah. buy it. Like, like I, yeah. I bought some courses where I thought like, okay, this is like the cash game crusher. I want to maybe apply it to, you know, uh, the, the tournament stuff because he's working on Sims, but it doesn't really, it doesn't really translate that well. And I pay like a thousand bucks or something, mm -hmm. but I don't feel scammed because it's my own, like, you know, like you said, it's my own, it's my own decision, perspective yeah. that I, had which is you know maybe wrong but yeah mm -hmm. like that's the thing like it's it's tough to find that mix of like being truthful and trying to get people to buy shit it's kind of you know like if i would sell stuff i would just post pictures of me and the cats and like hey <laughs> buy my shit so i can feed them and i don't know if it, it would work but i think it I think would be it could it could it could, maybe, it could be maybe, a, yeah yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. They make but a yeah, I want to make it. something yeah. good, and I don't want to charge like too much money. So you know. yeah, I think like just something reasonable, not always like that one k price tag for every single course that you make, and then you just get a new creator, and that's just whatever. Um, yeah. yeah. All right, uh, Geoff, thank you so much for joining on the Poker Play podcast. It was my pleasure. I hope you guys in the chat enjoyed it. If so, don't forget to hit the likes up in the chat. Uh, it really helps the channel. Um, Send it to your friends if you enjoyed this. You can always watch it later, and it will be on. Um, and you can listen to that afterwards as well. Uh, Draft, I just want to give you the last word. Um, maybe address all into something you want to share, and then yeah, uh, see you soon. I have nothing to promote. I have nothing to promote. <laughs> I would. I would just say. Uh, I mean, it's still possible to make it in poker. Um, so you know, I, I don't know. We 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 talk about it like pretty negatively sometimes like even now we, we we talked about like a lot of the problems with it but like we also think like the game of poker itself is great it's like the best game ever so you know you have to find uh, the truth for yourself i guess and uh try and enjoy poker man it's it's a great game and uh i i will hopefully be able to promote it uh for as long as i can yeah so Thanks. Thanks for having me, by the way. I, I think uh, we didn't talk too much. Like, I don't know, like all of the questions were like very poker related and we actually just talked about all this other shit. <laughs> but that, that's, well, that's me, man. Like, that's all. That's what I always it happens. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thought about it was different from from other, you know, just I wanted also you to be able to talk about yeah, some things that are going on and uh, just the overall perspective on, on poker. And yeah, maybe it has been a bit negatively affected by you know a lot of shit that is clearly going on but mm -hmm, yeah. yeah right thank you all yeah. so much for tuning in um and then i'm gonna see you uh for the next stream in the chat <laughs>